Well, here we are again, back on YouTube, watching another video of math. Okay, section 8.2. If you have not watched section 8.3, all of those ones, go do that now. So this is not in proper order. You go 8.1, then 8.3, then now 8.2, and then back to 8.4. So if you have not watched 8.3, all of those ones, go watch that now, and then come back to this because you'll need to know that in order to do some of the stuff today. We are gonna graph. What are the purposes? So we're going to discover properties of the log graph, what they look like, some of those things. We are also going to graph some of these functions, and we're going to find inverses of log functions. Plus, we're going to look at transformed graphs and make some equations from that. Essentially, Think of chapter one, applied to logs. That's today's lesson, so all that in one. What do log graphs look like? Well, if this is your original equation, then this is going to be what a graph looks like, provided C, the base, is bigger than one. It's gonna look like this. If the base is between zero and one, you're gonna have something that looks like this. Just an interesting tidbit. I don't know how this will work, but if you slant your head to the side, you will see two exponential functions, one in growth, one in decay. So interesting fact there. You'll see the connection of that today. Also notice here, I've got a vertical asymptote. Remember with exponents, we had horizontal. Now we have a vertical. So let's try graphing this. y equals log base two of x. First things first, we make a table of values. Here we go, here's x, y. Take your x values. Now I pick these x values specifically. You, could, you can pick any x values, but I specifically took powers of two. The reason for that is because it's log base two. And this gave me some nice y values. That's why I did this. So that's why you see one over four, because that's two to the negative two. One over two, because it's two to the negative one. So I picked these values very specifically for this. And that's something that you would need to know if you're gonna make a table of values. There are specific X's that make your life a lot easier. Then we're gonna plot these and connect the points. Here's our graph. Again, imagine arrows at the end of this. It would take me way too long to make those arrows. So this is what you've got. Here's your equation. So not too bad for graphing. Let's try this one. So here we've now got a transformed function. So we've got a vertical expansion by two. We've got a horizontal reflection and we've got a horizontal translation, one to the right. All of these fine and dandy transformations we can apply to logs, as you can see here. Put some ordering, vertical expansion, vertical reflection, horizontal translation. So first things first, we need to do a table of values of log base three of x. Once I do that, I can transform it knowing what these transformations are. So let's first do a table of values. Here's a table of values for log base three of x. Pretty straightforward. Then I'm gonna take those points. I just did one over three as a decimal because I didn't want to write one over three every time, but that's, that's a rounded decimal. It's really 0 0.3 repeating. So applying a vertical expansion by two to each of these points. So take the Y value times it by two. Do a horizontal reflection. Just make all the X's negative here. And then a horizontal translation. So add one to each of the X values. So here's our points. Then we are going to take those points, which are these ones, and we are going to plot those on a graph and connect the dots. So here is our equation again, arrows at the end. Notice here, where's my, um, where's my vertical asymptote? Take a look at that and see where you'd think it would be. 
And there's something specific to the equation that relates to that. And I'll get to that in a sec, but just take a look at where that vertical asymptote is. Vertical asymptote. This is as thinking of it. So whatever your horizontal translation is, that is where the vertical asymptote is. So for example, if we look at this equation here, my horizontal translation is three to the left. So therefore, my vertical asymptote is three to the left at x equals negative three. And that's because h is equal to negative three. So kind of like with your exponential graph, where whatever the, 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 the k value is, the translation up and down, that tells you where the, the horizontal asymptote is. For this one, it's how much left and right gives you your vertical asymptote. Let's try inverses. So here's our equation. Let's write an inverse. You remember the inverse stuff. Switch the x and y and solve for y. So first subtract 2. Then in order to get rid of log base 3, I put both sides 3 to the power of. 3 to the power of log base 3 cancels out, and I end up with just y. So y equals 3 to the power of x minus 2. There's my inverse of the original function. Notice the inverse of a log is an exponent. Let's try this. y equals 10 to the power of x minus 2. And I want to get the inverse. So switch x and y. And then we solve for y. So I can take the log of both sides. Remember the power or the log base 10 of 10, those cancel out, and I'm left with y minus 2. So I add 2 to both sides. y equals this. So getting inverses, the process, not too tricky. I, yeah. So taking a look at transformed graphs. So if I give you two functions like this, where the original is the blue line and I'm getting to the, the red line, I want to look at what is my new equa equation. So the original is y equals log base 3 of x. I'm trying to get what's the equation of the other line. So first, let's look at my... The, let's look for a. So comparing two points on the blue line, notice between these two points the difference is 1. If I compare those same two points on the new graph, it's also 1. Therefore, there's no vertical stretch and no reflection in that case as well. If we look at horizontally, comparing those same points, on the original it's 2, and on the new one it's 2. So we know there's no horizontal stretch. That makes our lives a little bit easier. And then we want to look at translation, since that's the only thing that's comparing between these two functions. So comparing two points, I chose these two. It doesn't matter which points you pick, it'll be the exact same. So notice with this, we went left 9, and we went up 2. So that means my h value is negative 9, and my k value is positive 2. So plugging that into the equation, you get this. This is my equation for a transformed graph. The process for this is going to be the same no matter what type of graph you get. And that is that. So this is taking all the transformations and applying it to logs. Again, I didn't go into a ton of detail about this. I made the video a little bit shorter just so you can take a look at this because you understand the basics. You just need to apply it now to logs. So there you have it. that I have a second recording device in my head. So, I can still record this. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe. My captors here are not very friendly. So, I'm gonna be trying to break out. But, please, I need your help.